This is a sin cooling radiator, and basically this is going to dissipate the heat from the water cooled spindle. And I'm going to start by removing these four, and you have to remove them down here at the base so the plastic cover comes off because I want to expose this area so it will radiate more heat. And then we're going to use an offset to mount this off this edge. So that's one of the first steps. So I'm going to get to it. Okay, as you can see, I'm, this is I've removed three of the thumb screws. This is the last one. And you can turn with your thumb if you want to. It's hard to shoot this and actually do it at the same time, but it is what it is. And once you do that, then the plastic color falls off and you have the metal. Now, like I said, I'm going to use some offsets. I have some 3 8 standoffs, and those are going to go here so that it stands off. The reason for that is to add more coolant and allow air to pass back here. So I'm going to have it stand up so air can go circulate and let this radiate more heat. All right. What I've done is I've used machine screws, 832 by an inch and a half, so they protrude a little bit on this side, and that protrusion actually allows for more heat dissipation, so you don't have to cut them off or get them exact. And the reason they protrude on this side, if you look, slide over to the other, there's very little clearance between the gantry, the router cradle mechanism, and the support. So I'm using heads that are low enough that it won't obstruct the movement of this. So you got to make sure you do that. When you mount this, you don't want anything protruding on the other side so that it interferes with your gantry movement. All right. Next step. Next, I took this radiator or cooler, mount, laid it out, and put four dots. Here's the fifth one because I had to move it because of the engraving. But you'll see the four dots, and now I'm going to put screws in those four holes, and then I will mount this cooler to here so that it stays and moves with the spindle. Now that is mounted. And I have standoffs, as you can see, back here. That gives us room to allow air to move up and cool to keep this radiator cooling. So the next, I'm going to mount the pump right here. And if you notice, right that mark right there, if you can see it, is the center of this gantry. So that allows me to have shorter hoses. If I move it all the way down here to this side or all the way to the other side, then I'll have to have longer hoses. This allows me to go, this is a 24 inch movement with 33 inch gantry, but it gives you 24 inch movement. So the 24 inches, if I mount this in the center, it'd be 12 each way. So that shortens my hoses. All right, now I'll go on to mounting the pump. Next time I'm gonna mount the pump, and what you see, I've done the same thing I did over here. I marked four holes, drilled them, and put one inch, eight thirty second machine screws through. And that's because the base of this pump has got a pattern of four holes, and it's a rubberized base so that it doesn't transmit all the vibration onto the machine. And I've routed a cable underneath so that it goes in the right direction. And I'm mounting it with these holes up so it's easier to fill the unit with antifreeze. And I'll be using antifreeze instead of water, and I will not use RV man antifreeze. I do not recommend RV antifreeze because it tends to gel. Uh, I recommend using, depending on where you're at, this machine is in Florida, so I really don't need antifreeze. But if I go back home to Michigan and take it with me, then I will need antifreeze. So I will actually use antifreeze rated for a car like minus 30 or minus 50 and I'll use pure antifreeze and 
will follow that process. All right. On to the next step. I'll secure these, put nuts on them like I did these so the pump is secured. And then I will mount the power supply over here. That'll be your next step. Tightening your system. If you look here, you can see the nuts pressed into the rubber. Do not over tighten them because you will pinch right through the rubber. So just gently hand tighten them and make sure they're secure. That way your system won't vibrate off. Next what we're going to do is mount the hose from this port to the cooler. Just give yourself enough to come out and loop and connect. So it's a nice gentle, don't bend it or kink it. The longer the hose, the better, because that hose actually radiates heat too. Um, if you look, you can see a shield here that deflects it. This is the input port. This is the output port. The input port should come from the radiator cooler. So the fluid is cool, comes into the pump, goes, is pressurized, goes out of the pump, and goes to your spindle motor. Comes back from the spindle motor, which will be mounted over here, comes back from the spindle motor and goes to this unit over here. All right, so those are the other two hoses. So there's one hose that goes from here to here, another hose that goes from here, from the spindle to here, from the pump to the spindle. Okay, and those are the hoses that will run. But next we're gonna mount the power supply, which is over here. All right, we're back at it again. I'm connecting the power supply, which is right there to a six foot extension cord. And it was cheaper to buy the extension cord at Lowe's, a Christmas special, 369. The wide spade is your neutral line and the skinny one is your hot line. So you have to connect a neutral and a line at your connector. And if you look, you can see that the wide or thick flange is connected to, see how that cord is serrated, little marks along the side. The hot side is smooth and the neutral side is serrated. So what I did is I cut off the end of the cord and if you look on here you'll see AC neutral and AC line. See the N and L? Neutral has the serrated on it. See the serrations? on the cord and the hot is the smooth side so I screwed those right in and what I did is I placed my orange line in my antifreeze. The antifreeze is poisonous so you have to be careful and I simply pulled a vacuum on this side before I stuck it in here and that filled, partially filled up my lines. And you can see there's still some air in the lines. So now that I've got that energized, I'm gonna turn on my pump and try to pump out my lines. So let me do that, plug it in. See it moving? You can see it pumping. Just moving a little bit. Okay. It's going to pump through there. You see it pulling up the equal air bubble, same kind. It's pulling up our antifreeze. Okay. fit this on here. You notice it doesn't really fit. So what I do, my trick is I stretch it a little bit using a pair of needles. You can find it here. There it is. 
See how the needle loads are pushed in? That stretches the hose. And after you do that, you can then slide it on. So let's try it, see how it looks. So you pull it off. That's how that gets you started. Just force it down until the bottom's out. Normally, you'd put this piece on first, but because this other end of the hose isn't connected, I can slide it over backwards. I'm not going to connect this yet because it's going to be an antifreeze is going to pump through there yet to fill up the line. All right, the system is full now. What I did is you'll notice there's a little air pocket right here. See it? So there's not that much flow that goes by, and it's not creating a vacuum here. So there's only a trickle of flow. You can see the water flowing, and that's all it needs to run. So that's flowing right away, and uh, goes through this cooler. What I did is I kept drawing a big air pocket right here. So I would take this hose off and use the syringe to put more antifreeze in it and in this hose. So make sure you do what I didn't do is put down some towels so you gather all this stuff up. Probably a piece of plastic first and then towels. So that as you're filling it and it drips, it doesn't get all over your board. I've got more replacement board. In fact, I'll just flip this one over. But, uh, so you don't have to do that, you can, and if you notice, and you can hear it, the router itself, the spindle motor is on, it's running at 23,000 RPM. I'll dress it up some more, I'll hang these two up with the bungee cord from the ceiling, I'll find a hook up there in the ceiling, and hang the bungee cords, and this cord. This is a spindle driver cord, and you don't want to integrate or mix it in with this cord because your stepper motor and your spindle will interfere with each other. You don't want that to happen. So that's it. I've got to dress it up, clean it up a little bit, and we'll start cutting some wood and test everything. Have a good day. Stepper motors, which are louder than the spindle. Motor. So I've got it together. I'm not. Uh, I've been doing some testing, and it's working quite well. It's keeping cool, even though it's cutting. Using just the uh, from around here where you can see it, that little radiator right there. This is the radiator. It's about 100 degrees, but it's uh, doing a pretty good job.